That's going to do it. The Sacramento Kings end the season with 46 wins, 46 and 36, 121 to 82. Light the beam, Kings fans. Look, it is a new season. Holy moly, Jim Bowley. Let's go. If everything holds up. As it is right now, the Kings will be hosting the Warriors on Tuesday night date or excuse me, time to be determined. We're going to get into all that. We're going to take your calls. Look, there's a lot of sports going on today. Um, we can talk about the Warriors Kings. We can talk about your thoughts about what you saw in the NBA today. You can talk about what you saw with the Kings and the Blazers this afternoon. Whatever you want to do, we will do it, and uh, we'll keep you up to date on the Masters, too. We know that is going on as well. Welcome to the Post Game Show here on If You Don't Like That. Two, one, go. Sacramento missed you. Carter, stolen by Williams. And look at this. Oh, you don't like that. You don't like NBA. That's an ESPN highlight right there. Whoa. Carlson comes in. How about this? Holy moly, Jim Bob Bowley. That was a major league smudge. Holy Jim Bob Bowley is right. It's the post game show here on If You Don't Like That. Ryan in Sacktown with you. Uh, so I, I like, I like the confidence, Excel. I like the confidence. Uh, well, I mean, you did not keep them out of the playoffs per se. I get it's the play-in. We're going to see them. You want MLB talk today, huh, Kevin? Huh? Congrats to Andrew. Uh, okay, there you go. There you go. I, I'm. Oh, is that... You mean... Okay, never mind. I'm even going to go there. Nathan, what's up, man? Uh, Nola blew it. Did they not know how the standings work? No, the Lakers just match up way, way better with the Pelicans and the Kings do. That's the bottom line of it. Yeah, and this is what I'm talking about right here. The Kings took care of business today. Uh, the Blazers, look, that was an open gym today. That was what it was. They were throwing up threes. They got chippy towards the middle. You got guys that are trying to possibly get a look somewhere next season and that's the last game of 82 for them think about if you're on that team i mean you probably can't wait for the season to get over but the news here the news here is the kings if everything holds up let's go through the scoreboard the lakers as we just talked about with the pelicans the lakers 119.99 that one's gonna go final in 321 You've got the Celtics who knocked off the Wizards earlier today. You've got the Hornets who beat the Cavs. You got the Pacers. They put up 157 over the Hawks. The Raptors lose to the Heat. Knicks over the Bulls. We're almost to what we want to talk about. Magic uh, over the Bucks. Sixers over the Nets. The Nuggets gone final 126 111. The Suns 125 106. The Mavericks barely played anybody. Uh, lose to the Thunder 135 to 86. The Spurs 123-95. The Warriors have won 123-116. The Rockets knock off the Clippers. And obviously, your Kings win the basketball game. So, what does this mean for the Western Conference standings? You guys know what it means for your Kings. But what does this mean for the West now? Oklahoma City, a team that we just saw with SGA, guess what? They're going to be the one seed in the Western Conference. That's huge. That is huge. You know why? Because if you end up as the Kings, if you end up as an eight, 
not a bad place to be. Um, but let's go through it. Timberwolves, they're going to be second, 56 and 25. Then you've got the Nuggets, 56 and 25 as well. Uh, looks like the Timberwolves had the tiebreaker there. The Clippers, 51 and 30. Mavericks, 51 and 31. The Pelicans, they are going to fall to the seven seed. Or the yeah, they will fall to the seven when that game goes final. So the Pelicans are going to move to the seven. The Suns are going to move into the six. Man, what if Sacramento won that game? Does it make a difference? Does it? But it, it makes you think about the games earlier in the season that the Kings really struggled with, the, the games they should have won. That is where it uh, fell apart for them. Grant may be joining us. He has a couple of other commitments uh, or a couple of other things happening right now. So he is hoping to get on. We're working on that. So we're efforting him. Hopefully, uh, we will uh, have him on in a second. Looks like Denver. No, I said that wrong. You're right. Denver will be two. Timberwolves will be three. Kings should have 60 wins. I don't know about that, Peter. Hey, um, guys, if you want to call the show, that's, that's really what I'm going to be here for today. Talk about that because we've got to look at, uh, we've got to do a breakdown of these two teams. Here's the thing: you've only seen the Warriors, or you've only seen the Warriors once since uh, really the first month of the season. You guys remember this? The Kings played the Warriors three times at the front end of the season. Now, I put out some numbers earlier today. Yeah, can I talk about what's next for the Kings? So what I'm doing right here, Vlad, the Kings are going to be playing the Warriors. So the Kings will be uh, hosting the Warriors. It looks, oh, well, you know what? It looks like the Kings are going to host the Warriors. Help me out in the chat. I want to wait until everything goes final before we uh, start making judgments. But if things hold up, regardless of whether it is in G Golden State or whether it is in Sacramento, um, the Kings will be playing the Warriors a long summer. No, well played though, Adam. Nice try, Adam. Adam, funny business on the show. I don't think so. Let's go Kings. Let's go Kings. See, now this is what I'm talking about. Big game. What's up, Cody? Tuesday night. Yes, indeed. Uh, let's see. Like how predicted last week, Kings will play the Warriors. Lakers will play Nola. You did. That is true. I remember that. Good job by you, James. Uh, soon, we need to start talking about who we are keeping and who we have to let go. Come on. Uh, we'll stop. Okay. If if that's your attitude right now in this post-game show, this is not the post-game show for you today. This is the post-game show where we're going to talk about the matchup. And if I'm talking about the matchup, the Kings have a chance. In fact, I'll go on the record right now and say this. The Kings might have a better chance of beating the Warriors as the Kings sit today without Malik Monk than they did earlier in the season when Malik Monk was healthy. Think about that for a second. And here's the thing. You look at the four matchups between these teams already this season between the Kings and the Warriors. Golden State, now this is my worry, in the four matchups, obviously two and two, on the season series, Golden State has scored 120 points a game against Sacramento. 120 points a game. And if the game happens to be in Sacramento, if the game is in Sacramento, 122.5 is what the Warriors are averaging in the Golden 1 center. Uh, the points, though, between wins and losses this season with the Kings and the Warriors have been a little bit different 112 in wins um and then 128 in losses that's because it's garbage time when the kings play well against the warriors it gets close so i'm not going to give you guys two or three or even four takes on the setup between this game and the setup of uh, how these teams are going to match up because we have so much to go through still. I kind of want to be here to close the gaps. There's a lot of sports going on. We're going to do a ton, a ton of programming 
to uh, get you ready for the Kings and the Warriors. You guys remember we had Damon Bruce on the Kings court not too long ago. We're going to try to track down Damon and Larry Kruger. Damon and Larry Kruger, we're going to try to track them down before the Kings and the Warriors match up. So I want to get your calls. That's why I'm here. I'm here for your calls. If you're here to say the Kings are going to lose, the season's over, it's not going to be that kind of show. If you guys want to talk about the matchup, we will talk about that. I'll give you guys, yeah, that's number one. That's no doubt about that. Uh, let's see. If we did play like we did today, we're going to win a 12-game win streak. Yeah, it's not going to happen. You guys, you played against a G League team today. That is what the Kings did. Let's update the scoreboard. It has, have we gone final? Do we have the final standings? for the Western Conference as I check. And again, you guys can hit the link if you would like to call the show. I would love to have you guys up here talking Kings, Warriors. Give me your predictions. Are you going to be going to the games? Let us know. We would love to hear about that. And uh, we are official. The Kings are the nine seed. The Kings are the nine. The Kings will be hosting. The Golden Stairs on Tuesday. Lakers uh, will be playing. No, the Lakers will be playing. Oh, well, that's still not final. Okay, so the Kings Warriors is final. Look, you guys are getting stuff on the fly today. Uh, why can't fans predict the Kings will lose? No. Uh, okay, you can predict whatever you want. I'm happy to do that, but... What I'm saying is I'm not because there were some questions about what are the key, they're going to lose. So what are we going to do in the offseason? This isn't the show for that. That's what I was saying. Give me your opinion. If you think if you do think that the Kings are going to lose, that's fine. Give it to us. Uh, Kings too soft. I, I don't know if I, I necessarily agree with that. Uh, we need one win to uh, slide in. No, you got to. Well, you get two shots. at apple if you lose you get two shots at the apple um let's see we're not getting it see okay so disappointing guys uh, kings versus warriors ref now this is a good point this is a good point kyle draper brought this up i guess uh after last game he thinks the nba is out of control he thinks they've lost control of the physicality. I don't know if I'd agree or disagree necessarily with that, but the Warriors aren't an overly physical team. Now, they can be if you let Draymond get into that space, but that is going to be the biggest wild card. Good job by you, Justin, is the referees. How are the refs going to call this game? on uh, Tuesday, and it's likely going to be Tuesday night here in Sacramento, but what are the refs going to do, and how are the Kings going to come out? Is it even going to matter? Can the Kings come out with some physicality? I mean, to me, and you guys tell me if you think I'm wrong, I believe this is really uh, the pressure's off the Kings. This is almost like uh, you're playing with house money. Now, if you don't make the playoffs, sure. You, Grant's maintained all year that you have an owner that may overreact and may want to make some steep decisions or big decisions in the offseason. But let's talk about the other side because let's look at the teams that are in the play-in uh, coming in to or actually after play today. The Kings, or I should say the uh, Warriors, they're 8-2 and two in their last 10 games, okay? Three and seven. Well, now that's better for the Kings, but seven and three, the Lakers, seven and three, and then the Suns, six and four, and it goes from there. So the Kings by far have the worst record out of the teams in, well, they're, they, have, they're, they have the tiebreaker with the Warriors, but I guess what I'm saying, the worst 10 game record coming into the play in. So maybe that is a spot for optimism. Maybe this is the where the Kings turn it around. And I'm going to give you a take. Everything, everybody that says the Kings are going to lose and, you know, the season's over, that very, very well may be. This has been a very, very inconsistent basketball team all season. We know that. The Warriors, believe it or not, have actually been fairly 
consistent. Think about the the issues they've been through this season. They've had a ton with Draymond. They've had injuries, and I know injuries are part of the game, but the Warriors have played a lot of close games. But let's just say the Kings get into a seven-game series. This thing's going to be flipped on its head. You're going to now have more talk about Malik Monk, maybe if the Kings can extend a series, possibly coming back. There's no pressure on this team in the West, y'all. The West is wide earth open. There is not a favorite to me in the Western Conference this year. It, it, there's just not. And if the Kings could end up playing OKC, I think that's a really good matchup for them. But they got to get past the Warriors. And I, I'm telling you, this could flip very quickly if the Kings could finally, finally, I call it Game 8 Syndrome. Since 2008, Sacramento has been stuck in Game 8. And that's because the Kings have never won a Game 7. They haven't won that big game to take them over the top. Yeah, they broke the playoff streak last year. But I I'm just telling you, something's going to flip in this city if this team makes it to a seven-game series. And if they do, uh, you're looking at two teams that I think are not terrible matchups. In fact, all three teams at the top of the Western Conference, I have no problem seeing those teams. In fact, the Nuggets, to me, are probably the team would not want to see if I'm the Kings, but the other two, I'm okay with it. So, um, yeah. Okay. We're not talking about the win. The Kings, the Kings had an open practice today. How much am I talking about the game right now, Donald? Not that much. So, uh, okay. Well, turn it off. Turn it off. If I'm hurting your ears. I'm sorry about that. Uh, go Kings need more rest. We need to focus on the details. Yeah. And I think they're going to be doing that. Also look to see if the Kings make any moves on the roster. Um, you can have up to 15 on the roster. So, uh, I thought it, did you guys think it was interesting that Mason Jones got some run today before Colby Jones? I did. Uh, Mike Brown's talked a lot about Mason in his impact on the bench. So um, if he, and I, it's not even an impact on the floor, just what he brings. Dude, it's all good, Donald. I know you're talking about me, bro. I know. You ain't got to get defensive. I know. I know. I know. I got you. I, 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 you're getting your back. I got you. So uh, Grant would be concerned about playing Curry in a winner take all. Of course. We, Cody, you know this better than anybody. What's what's Grant's tagline? I'm not even going to say it. Cody, type it out and put it in the chat. The Warriors, you can do the rest. You've got to know that one. Um, let's see. Not sure if the Kings can beat the Dubs even at home. Yeah, I almost feel better about that one on the road, but um, something feels different. Yeah, uh, Vlad, it is a... Okay, yes. Um, Jordan Slauson, to me, he has the highest ceiling out of the group in Stockton right now. He, he is the most, most athletic out of that group in Stockton. And I'm taking Keon out of that conversation because Keon's now a full-time Sacramento King. Um, but he makes some freaky plays out of nowhere. Now he's raw too, though. So um, the other thing I really like about Jalen is he holds his teammates accountable. You guys know I covered the Stockton Kings for the latter half of the season. And um, there were many times, especially in the Western Conference uh, playoffs in the finals, where if a mistake was made or Scal didn't get back, Jalen Slauson was the one holding Scal accountable. Uh, we're getting some more updates. AD just blew his back out. Hopefully we get the Lakers in the first round. We'll see. Fox needs to play uh, with chip on his shoulder, take it to the Warriors and not settle for threes. Now that's going to be um, probably one of the bigger conversations here in Sacramento leading into this game, because you are not going to beat the Warriors in a three point shooting contest. In fact, the second game between the Kings and the Warriors this season in golden state it was really low scoring. It was 102 to 103. Let me pull that up really quick. That second game, uh, 101 or 102, 101 was the score. So 
Can the Kings muck it up? If you guys remember that one in Golden State, that was kind of a mucked up, ugly game. And we were like, oh, coming off the Jazz in the game um, after that, I think it was it was the Warriors at home. Warriors, Lakers, and then Warriors again. So, um, yeah, it, it's one of those things where the three-pointer, to me, is going to make or break, make or break this game. And we know that. It, it's really easy to say that. But with the Warriors especially, especially, uh, let's see, the Kings can't. Let's see. Ryan needs to chill. I like this. The Kings can't beat, or let's see, Kings beat a cupcake team. I'm not excited. Okay. It, it, the excitement is not off of today, y'all. The excitement is this is a new season. How have, I've been saying it all day. It's a new season. It's a new season. Forget about the 82 the Kings just played. Everything's out the window. And yes, Mitchell can play well against the Warriors. Now, what's Mike Brown going to do about Mitchell this time against the Warriors, Matthew? Because you remember Game 7, he rested him, and I think that was one of the bigger things I looked back at. Um, the choice to give, it, it, was, um, it wasn't it was Davion, but anyways, the choice not to play Davion in that game, I think, really hurt the Kings with Curry going off. I, you know what? Until you're right. They are <laughs> night syndicate at some point. They will, if they have not already, but, um, at the end of the day, Steph's going to be fine. But, um, but at the end of the day, we got to get through it and we will get through it. And it happens again, Tuesday night, Kings and the warriors. Look, I'm not going to keep this thing going too much longer. The masters is still on. We've had a hell of a season, 82 games, um, I don't, it, Grant's not going to be able to make it. I saw that. And that's not why I'm getting off. Um, <laughs> have, Ryan, Teddy was positive and you, Grant, banned him. Did we ban Teddy for being positive? I, you know what, Teddy, Teddy, I think I wrongfully banned you, dude. You were not the problem. So, Teddy, you are unblocked. In fact, Teddy, you didn't know it. You were unblocked after that. I should have told you. Uh, keep Fox on Curry as much as possible. He did the best defensively. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. The Kings, and this is the last thing that I'm going to talk about before we wrap up. Yeah. Is anybody going to call this show? I'm not tired. No, Ben, I'm not tired. I'll go all day. I'll go all day. There's just a weird vibe in this show right now. Somebody give me a call. Zach, NBA guru, where are you at? Everybody's watching the Masters. I just put the link in. I want to hear from you guys. Lance, call the show. Anybody. Cheers, buddy. Looking forward to the Kings court. We'll talk tomorrow. Um, the Kings defense has centered largely around doubling the post. Doubling the post the last three, four, five games. So the Kings cannot double the post against Golden State. And I think Golden State probably has better. Uh, they're probably better on the front line than some of the teams that the Kings have been doubling because they just have the shooters. So uh, to me, yeah. Okay. Let's go, Donald. Yeah. Finish the story. Kings are going to finish their story. Yeah. I'm pumped too. I, that's why it's a little bit all over the place, but, um, that matchup is not as favorable. So the Kings, what are they going to do? Who are they going to focus on? I mean, who is, uh, who's the Jordan pool of last year that the Kings think that they can get an advantage on. And I think the Kings need to focus is because you guys do this. I wouldn't all my focus on this game and Clay Thompson. Steph Curry going to do what Steph Curry is going to do. We already know that. But you, you got to still put a priority on him, number one. But Clay Thompson, find a way to make Clay try to beat you in this series. We bring in Steven. Steven, welcome to the post game show. Hello, Rhino. Do you hear me? Yes, dude. Hey, uh, do you listen to the King's Court by chance? Um, I think I've been listening for a long time since I was a kid. I mean, I've known uh, Grant Napier when I was speaking Love almost it. like Borat. <laughs> but um, but I'm I'm a little bit embarrassed because I'm supposed to be very tech savvy and I can't even figure out a way to 
reach in to make a call or do I do it through no a phone word. Order? Dude, dude, so. you picked you picked me up. I was asking if you listened to my podcast because I was gonna give you a, a VIP pass to our uh appreciation listener appreciation brunch on may 4th for picking me up the first call after the end of the regular season steven well thank you thank you i, I don't i don't know what to say i mean i do and i don't right but um <laughs> it, it's, it's been a challenging season right i mean yeah right it's it's you know we all want better right we all want to see improvement and i think you know we had higher expectations uh this season than what we experienced and probably i didn't want to be a debbie downer which i've been putting in the the chat there but you know you want to you want to see something more than what we've uh, experienced this season and i wish i got to tell you i watched every game i did it sure I've been busy and whatnot but you know i've been a kings fan you know pretty much my whole life you know with yeah just stokovich a lot of diva it's that era and it's hard to lose that in nostalgia when you experience it as a kid and you always easily compare it to that, you know, every season as you go. Um, sadly, I didn't get to experience the downfall of the 16 losing seasons before the playoffs, but, you know, just being in the playoff picture should be a positive uh, reinforcement, you know? Um, so I don't want to go any further. Uh, yeah. Rhino, and, and I apologize if I misspelled your name. I was calling you Rhino, like a no, Rhino. I've been Rhino with an O. So English no, is not my good. first language, by the way. But, uh, you know, I try, you know. You I sound great, best. Steven. You sound great, man. Thank you so much for the call. And thank you so much for watching the channel and being a Kings fan. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you again. Right, and uh, send my regards to Grant. Will do. I will certainly pass that on. That is Steven. You guys are saying the link is not working. That is weird. Okay. Well, it worked for Steven. So um, explain the play-in. So the winner of the seven. Okay. The loser of the 9-10 is out. Oot. Gone. Gone. Out of there. If you uh, if you here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Really make a run, yeah. Winner of the nine versus ten seed will face the loser. Thank you, thank you. Easy enough. We bring in, oh my man, my courtside buddy John. What is up? What is, how are you, Ryan? I'm great, buddy. Can, how are you doing? Right on, buddy. Can you hear me? I got you loud and clear. You ready for the Kings okay. Lakers or Kings Warriors? Hey, man, let's go with the Warriors first, buddy. Let's go yeah. with the Warriors first, man. And you know what? I'm all right with going against them because, man, we got to play good competition to see how good we really are. And we know the Kings can be good because we played competition, good competition, and played them well at a lot of times. We played core po poor competition and played them poorly at a lot of times. So I'm really not, I'm really not that hesitant. And um, also, Ryan, like you were saying, I agree with stopping uh, – Clay Thompson, because he can get more frustrated, flustered in his head, and when he when he yeah when he's pissed, he doesn't play as well. You know what I mean? Like Fox, yep. when he's pissed, he plays he better than when he's just all happy with everybody. Yeah, sometimes Clay will force it. Clay will force it sometimes if you get up into him, and you can yep. also get him to turn the ball over sometimes. A little traveling, um, an offensive foul once in a while. He, he's Clay is still a very good player. He's just not the player he used to be, John. Hey, I wholeheartedly agree. And you know he's not getting any younger. And the more, the more he takes the punishment, the less he likes it. Where hey, he's a fairly punishing or used to be a fairly punishing player for being such a good three-point shooter and so forth. But, hey, man, I am not afraid of playing the dubs. And, you know, like I a lot of times say with my football teams, hockey teams, baseball, whatever, you got to beat the best to be the best. And the Warriors might not be the best anymore, but they've got the best in them. They've got that championship DNA, people say. And, man, it's just going to be fun to go against them. And all we can do is hope, man, this is why we play them. We're, it's possible to beat them. It's not going to be easy, but we yeah. can do it. I've, I've got faith. I, I love it, John. I'm with you. I, I think that for what it's worth, the last time the Kings beat the Warriors on their home court at G1C, that was a big deal to that team. They needed to get over that mentally. And the other thing that we're not talking about, John, 
is this version of the Kings has really not played the Warriors. Think about how their defensive rating and their style has changed since, you know, Malik got hurt, Keon stepped in, Davion, what he's given to the team. So I, I kind of think it's exciting. It, it feels like hey. a new matchup for a stale rivalry. I've kind of got to agree with you because, you know, with Monk out, and Herder out. Don't forget about Herder. Just yeah, because I'm you not know, saying he Herder. Great been, point. Yeah, just because Herder wasn't playing that well before he got injured, he was trying to play well. He'd have great spacing, and like I think we talked to about it a few days ago, he would move. He's constantly moving around on the court. That and someone brought up Peja Stojakovic. Well, Peja, he wouldn't just stand still in the corner. He would move from corner to corner, or baseline to corner, or across. He would constantly be moving. And that's what Herder did also. And that would confuse, even if he's not making his shots, a lot of times that would confuse defenses a little bit more. And and confusion for any other team is going to be a positive for our own team. Because it's obviously, obvious we get confused sometimes. Yeah. Bonus down low, when, you know, with his uh, double take, triple take, you know, the, his pump fake all the time. Yeah, yeah. And, well, and it confuses him sometimes more than other teams. Uh, you know, you bring up an amazing point, and this is a very good point too, Larry. That is a very good point. But Sabonis, he has struggled mightily against the Warriors, yeah. John. I mean, like it's thrown the offense completely off. So it almost, to me, the onus on this point is on the coaching staff to get Sabonis into different places, John, where he can try to get to a different spot, have some different success, give Golden State a different look. They've got to have a variation off of that DHO because Golden State feels like, to me, they're sitting back and thinking, hey, we, we can guard this in our sleep. They are thinking that. And look, uh, Steve Kerr, that dude is a smart individual. He may have been one of the smartest players that was even on their championship Bulls teams. He didn't have the biggest role, but he was one of the smartest players, and that's why he's such a good coach. And he keeps coaches around him that make sure and do their due diligence, that make sure and you know keep an eye on that small forward position and the shooting guard position for, or or whatever it is. He makes sure that his coaches do what they're supposed to do and and make sure they take accountability for themselves. And it's obvious, yeah. you know, the way the coaching tree is like that. I mean, we have Brown from his coaching tree, and you just look around the league. There's just tons of people that are uh, have been involved with with that offense and that system that they run. Yeah, it's a good, it's a great point, John. It really is. And in fact, the conversation is coming up about Kerr out coaching Brown. I, off the top of my head. I, I can't think of the last two years, every game the teams have played and say, yeah, he was out coached. I know that game seven, in my opinion, of last year's playoffs, he was out coached. I got to agree. And well, we can, you know, somebody brought it up a little bit earlier about Murray not playing nearly long enough. And he, Murray did a better job against Steph than De'Aaron did last year. And hopefully, and Murray's actually been playing better offensively right now at the end of this season than he was last year or even mm. earlier this season, which is – and he's getting more run, granted, because of injury. But just because he's getting more run now, at least he's making the best of him. I mean, he's hitting those threes more consistently. And we all know that his defense – you know, he could glue. He could stay like glue to people. He's not 6'8". You know, he's not 6'4 even. He's not that tall. But he can stay close to people, and he's quick like that. So – you know, we shall see, man. Like we always say, this we is why we see. play him. This is going to be fun. Why we play him. That's why we play him. Absolutely. <laughs> if you guys are, him, buddy. yeah, and holler in the chat if anybody's going to the game, if they know they're going to be there already. I'm sure we've got some season ticket holders up in here. John, for picking me up, brother. I appreciate it. See, this is what him and I were doing for like two hours at the Stockton game. That was a blast. We were. Him. Hey, it was a blast. We ended up driving up there together and just shooting the shit for a while and driving back and shooting the shit. And we were we were hoping that, you know, we were gonna be able to see and see the beam driving back down, but it was cloudy as hell and it was it yeah. was winter that oh, day. Oh yeah. A week ago it was, it was bad winter. That day. Today it's it, spring. it was bad that day for sure. <laughs> All right, brother. Cold. I'm sure we will be talking before the uh play in begins, but thanks for the call, Johnny.
Hey, we'll meet at Pops one of these days, Ryan. Great talking to you. Go Absolutely. Kings. Let's light the beam, boys. Light the beam. <laughs> that is John Finch for you. John is one of the absolute best. Um, all right. So some good points there that we need to kind of talk about. I see some stuff. Larry Wong put in a good point about the King's speed. And John brought up Keon Ellis. And I don't know. Maybe I missed it, you guys. But um, I, I posed the question. Are the Kings in a better position right now to match up with the Warriors without Malik Monk than they were at the start of the season. Now, remember, that's not going to include Davion Mitchell's play and Keon Ellis's play, and you don't have Kevin. We've talked about that Kevin thing. So it, I guess if you take Kevin out of the equation, that changes it. But if it was just Monk, I, I don't know. I guess we wouldn't know, would we, about Keon? I mean, Keon was going to just be another two-way, just another two-way. And he won his way to that job. He really, and really, Keon was on his way to that job. So, yeah, it does. You're right, Lights. It, it does empty the bench. Patrick is saying yes. I, I you know, I think it's a decent conversation. Uh, Larry, I'm going to start calling you greater than. That's what I'm going to call you. Everybody gets a nickname around here. Like John, he's Finchy. Uh, you're greater than now you've been glossed. And by the way, I did not gloss Zach, the NBA guru. He glossed himself and we let it fly. Uh, Matthew coming in Trey and Mitchell off the bench. At least Mitchell has been productive the last 10 games. He's been special the last 10 games. And I'm not looking at Davion scoring because we know the Kings are hurting for scoring right now, but we also know that they don't need a lot of scoring when they're playing great defense. And when I'm talking about great defense, games where they get 10 or more steals, games where they're winning transition, those kind of games. If the Kings get to 100 first many times, or at least until this last stretch of basketball, um, the Kings had a very, very good record. I think it was like a 60 or 70% win percentage when they hit 100 points first. So I guess that takes the firepower out of it, but then you also have to factor in the fact that the uh, the margin of error for the Kings is very small with some of these guys because they don't have they don't have very many distributors right now. The Kings right now are full of finishers, and Davion Mitchell. Going back to my original point. He has proven himself and has stepped up and shown that he can be an effective distributor as well and get that offense stimulated and moving. Um, and that's that's priceless for this team right now because the biggest thing, when this team starts to have bad runs on offense, they tighten up and the ball movement stops, and instead they start dribbling. Hey, uh, we bring in my buddy, Adam. What's up, man? Welcome Let's to the go, show. Bro. How you doing? Hey, Let's go. First off, who called that Damian Priest cash in on the money in the bank? You did, bro. I did not think that that was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, you got that Yeet. one right. Okay. Um, I mean, just what's what's the best case scenario? Like, best case scenario for me this season is that we actually make the playoffs and we get to offload that draft pick um, to Atlanta. I mean, if we hang on to that draft pick, I think that's – the worst case scenario for us so we can make some moves in the off season. I mean, yeah, we might win one um, in this play in, but are we going to win two? It's a great question. I mean, if you look at the Kings this year and you look at their trends, Adam, no, probably not. Um, but then you could easily say yes too, because sometimes they would go on little runs where they'd have four in a row. Or you remember the road trip? <laughs> where they were five yeah. of seven, that was pretty damn good. A seven-game East Coast road trip doesn't happen too often. Um, yeah, but it also happened with, with Herder and Monk, you know? So it's a, we don't no, have that now. So. You, you are right. Now, the thing about the pick you're talking about is it's not like that goes away. That that pick will still have to go or be tied up to Atlanta. Um it, it's it's putting it off a year now with the new CBA 
Is it a big deal? Do the Kings drop off next year? I don't know. Does that pick well, become well, more what valuable? What do we do with that pick this year? Well, the pick depends on whether or not. I, I don't know off the top of my head, so I do not want to say it with. I accuracy. think it's top fourteen protected, right? So yes. Let's say it's, we. It's keep lottery. It. It's lottery protected. So right. Um, if we keep it, do we trade it to another team? No, 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 we keep it. And then who do we pick? You know no, the I mean? Kings. Yeah, we're we're kind of far out from that still. But I, I think when you look at and I've been really, really big about this, um, the new CBA that's going into effect. And I, I think this is why the Kings are going to be so well positioned to get Malik Monk. I know everybody's worried about that. But look, he just got the community crossover award today. Um, he, he loves it here in Sacramento. De'Aaron has been on the record saying that um, he would like to have him here again. Um, but I just think that that's going to be the focus. They have, they're one of nine teams that as of right now that is projected to have the space to pay Malik in the ballpark of what he wants. And the Kings technically... Can, the king capped on what they can pay him, but uh, there's a group of teams that will not go into the area of the CBA um, or the penalty on your salary that makes you lose your mid-level exception. And the mid-level exception in this league is so important. That's how so many of those third pieces or uh, big supporting roles to a big three come to a team for cheap and they're able to stack up and the NBA is trying to garner against that. So really uh, the best case scenario is they go to a seven game series. I, I think yeah. that is because you probably get Malik Monk back um, towards the end of that, if they can push it out. But um, if they don't lose because of the injuries, it, the injuries can't become an excuse at them. You know, uh, last year, the Kings were inactive for the most part. They re-signed Lyles. And this um, year. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so the Kings, even though the moves they made at them were really prudent and smart, like, for instance, the whole uh, Lopez trade, the cash, because in a trade in the NBA, something tangible has to change hands. It's not like the old days where you could send a rack of basketballs in a net for somebody. Um, so they got the cash considerations and the cash considerations offset the bonus or the raise that Keon Ellis got. So Monty's making smart moves, but they're also not making moves that have said, Hey, we're committed to this group. This is who we are. This is how we're going to establish our championship window. So I don't want to see an off season, Adam, where we have, not a lot of moves, and I'm not saying the Kings need to make a tough, a ton of moves, but they need to do something to get better. They something to get considerably better and keep up with the rest of the NBA because they didn't last year. So I don't want the injuries to be that excuse. Like, okay, well, we're we're gonna build out for another year and see where we land because I don't think the fan base is gonna have any patience for that. 100%. And so if we do re-sign Monk at, you know, 17, 20 million a year, whatever it is, what are we doing with that two guard position? Because now you're like, if you're going to pay Monk that kind of money, mm -hmm. do you really want him coming off the bench? Like the guy's proven that he can score. And yes, I understand why we've kept him on the bench um, to this point, but it, you know, something's got to give here because it's not Herder. Uh, I, I think if if we're going to sign Monk to that kind of money, he needs to be starting. And well, Adam, if Monk, if Monk was ever going to start at a time when De'Aaron Fox was still on this roster, it would have happened by this year. I mean, there was every and that's option. what's so weird, right? Like, well, it's not to me because when. Because we I have think, nothing else coming off the bench. Well, here's the fatal flaw to me of this Kings team. You guys can tell me I'm wrong and that's fine. But to me, the fatal flaw lies in the things that are supposed to be established at the beginning, like the foundation of your team. Every team identifies roles for players. 
this is going to be your role. This is going to be your role. And those change from time to time, but guys know generally where their minutes are going to be and what they're coming into the game to do, at least the really good teams in the NBA, the teams that have championship windows. I feel like there has not been roles established for this team this year whatsoever. And that started, and you asked about Keon. That, to me, was a key. That was the first time that we have seen that the Sacramento Kings need, because we've heard a lot of talk about 3 and D, the Kings need a two guard that starts that can guard more effectively than they can score. However, they need to be able to score. They've got to be able to hit the shot a little bit more than Keon can do because there's already with Kevin Herter on the floor and that starting unit, there's not enough shots out there for the guys that need the shots. Right. I, you know, I just think like if there was a way to have like Fox monk, I would love to see um, Maurice slide down to the three Sabonis to the four and let's get a fucking, sorry, let's get a freaking big in there to play some ball. I would love to see us increase the size of this lineup uh, moving forward next year. And, um, you know, Sabonis is great, but uh, I think we've seen him get his butt kicked when, um, you know, there's, someone who uh can can beat him down low and uh you know i just i don't i don't know where this team's going i don't um i don't really have a lot of optimism for the play in uh or the playoffs and and that's okay like you know considering last year was our first time in the playoffs since since 16 years like we're gonna have these and, and you guys talked about this uh last episode or two but we're going to have these ups and downs and stuff. And, 100%. and that's part of building a championship team. But 100%. Um, I think our expectations based off of what we saw last season and this season, um, you know, we had just as many wins as we did last year. And now we're in ninth versus third. So mm -hmm. obviously the competition's raised, but um, you know, uh, we need, we need something. We need something if we're going to, if we're going to make a splash. So I'm with maybe, you. Maybe we just draft a uh, brawny and oh, <laughs> you know, what? you know what, Adam, I'm playing I'm play with you. Adam, I'm play with, Adam, I never go there. Adam, Adam, I love you. You, you know, I appreciate you as a <laughs> listener and a contributor, dude. Um, you know that I'm also very heavily influenced <laughs> in the Jim Rome show. <laughs> So I, I'm sorry, dude. I got to run you. Uh, that that's, <laughs> that is not going to fly here. No. Goodbye, Adam. Ah, Adam's getting ran. Blake. Uh, yeah, no, no chance, dude. Uh, well, I'm not going to say no chance. I think what's cemented is a two guard that is very similar to Keon. Now, if Keon can improve in the off season. Sure, he could be the starter, but I don't think the Kings have Keon in the uh, plans to be the starter next year. I would be very, very surprised by that. Adam, you're not coming back on, dude. Uh, you can't try to name. Not going to happen. Uh, the main need is stretch five. Well, there's the problem, William, is there's not a lot of those guys available. And when there is... They are not cheap. They are not cheap. So tell you what we're going to do. We're going to get out of here. We, we've gone about 48 minutes. Man, it's been so heavy hitting and straight on. Didn't even get a chance to tell you guys about Bennett's West Side Grill in Rockland, located in the Blue Oaks Town Center. I told you about brunch the last couple days. Go check out the dinner menu. Check out the specials that they have during the week. Happy hour is amazing. 60, 60 different wines by the glass. Also some great dining options too. Um, weekend brunch, you know about it. It's great. You can make reservations for dinner and brunch at Bennett'sRestaurants.com. You can also check out their other locations in Roseville and also off of Howe and Fair Oaks a huge thank you to Bed Grill in Rockland, located in the Blue Oaks Town Center. Sponsors all, 
all season long. We absolutely love them. Thank you so much to Brian and the team there. Um, and also, huge thanks to Max. We're going to be putting those auctions up that I told you about uh, imminently. Those are going to be going up. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go listen to the post-game show from last game and then also listen to the pre-game show today. Um, and you can find out some more information. I'll talk about those on the King's Court as well. Speaking of the King's Court, that's where you can find me. That'll take you right to my Twitter page. Uh, it is a daily Insider Kings podcast. It's free and uh, gets you ready for the games. And we do some fun stuff. There's some Jim Rome crossover as well. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Also cover the Stockton Kings for you. So uh, it's a good mix. We've got a great community. May 4th will be our listener appreciation brunch. I can't wait for that. Hey, look, uh, let's sum this one up. Here's where we're at, y'all. 82 is books for the Kings. Could it have gone better? Yes. Could it have gone worse? Absolutely. Um, there's questions that need to be answered about this basketball team. Um, I, I would say probably the biggest is what is this team's identity? Who are the Sacramento Kings? And I think there's going to be a decent amount of things that we hear about in the postseason, you know, like different challenges throughout the season because there's going to be growing pains. It happens. It's normal. Um, but what's their identity going to be? And are they going to stick their flag on the hill of defense, offense, or somewhere in the middle? I don't care which one it is. I just want to know which one it's going to be. And certainly re-signing Malik Monk is a big part of that. Now, the NBA this year has gotten so much better. It really has. And the Stars played more games this year. They did. It, you can't tell me they didn't. I know today some a lot of the Stars sat out. But Demonis Sabonis had a season that probably is the best season you will ever see played by an individual here in Sacramento. I, I don't know that you will ever see a greater individual accomplishment, a more consistent individual accomplishment than what Domas has done. In, in fact, Jerry Reynolds, myself, Grant, sometimes we don't understand that what we're watching with him. So appreciate what you saw from him this season. And the season's not over. We have an opportunity to put rivalry to Kings fans, the Kings have an opportunity, whether they make it to a seven game series or not, to end the Warriors dynasty. How does that sound? Is that is that taking the next step in a championship window? I think it is. We haven't seen the Warriors and the Kings match up stylistically since the Kings have changed to this defensive mindset since the Kings have lost guys to injuries. Speaking of injuries, the Kings, healthiest team in the NBA last year. We knew that wasn't going to hold up. But as I go back to questions about this team, here's another one that needs to be answered that we've learned since the end of 82 games this year. Can, can, are the Kings capable of playing this style, a defensive style of basketball with the personnel currently on the roster, and can they stay healthy? That's the biggest question. Was this just a you know, one-off this year? The Kings luck caught up to them? Or was it a byproduct of a completely different style of basketball than this team had trained for? For 18 months. These are all questions we'll get to in the offseason. But first, damn it, you've got playoff play in basketball in Sacramento Tuesday night. And if you don't like that, is the place to be. We are going to get you for that game. And we will be coming to you with some exclusive content. So make sure you are subscribed to Grant. YouTube channel and if you are ready thank you so much we greatly appreciate it 7k 
already. Uh, go subscribe there. That is where you'll get notified if you'd like about our shows. But I can tell you, before Tuesday, when that ball's rolled out there, you will be ready if you pay attention to if you don't like that and if you pay attention to the King's Court because we're not just going to give you the King's side of it. We're going to give you both sides of it. We're going to let you know. We'll, give you, we'll bring in some guys, experts, guys that watch the Warriors play, have watched the Warriors for years, Larry Kruger, Damon Bruce. We'll try to get those guys in here. You got Grant Napier, Jerry Reynolds, so many others. So cherish this moment. Look, I get it. You guys wanted to have a seven-game series. I get that we want a championship, but the West is wide open. The new season just started, and the Kings are zero and zero. Thank you guys so much for being here throughout the season on If You Don't Like That. I know I said a ton of thank yous earlier on the pregame show, but um, it is not lost on me how lucky I am to get to come up here and talk about basketball and interact with all of you, and um, thank you. It means the world, and it is the greatest pleasure other than being a husband and a father that I've ever had in my life. So for that, go enjoy the rest of your sports day. We've got two and a half days to talk about the Kings and the Warriors Tuesday from the Golden One Center. So long.